I'm the first person in class today, although I think I'm a little too early. Then again, sitting here for 20 minutes sure beats having to suffer that time with Kenji. The combination of fatigue, frustration, and boredom starts making me feel very tired. I black out for a second, waking up when my head hits the surface of my desk. Rubbing my forehead, I realize this is a good reason, good a reason as any to stay up for now and stop coming to class so early later. Eventually, I hear a tapping noise outside in the hallway, and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. She's not in the class, so she must have some other business. Maybe she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door, looking hesitant as if she was a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so because she looks rather lonesome standing there. She steps in on her own accord though. After, stre after straightening her skirt and shirt collar as if it was of importance to look prim when entering our classroom. Excuse me. She calls into the quiet classroom with a probing, delicate voice. I realize the silence might unnerve her because of her blindness, so I break it. Good morning, Lily. Hisao, good morning. I didn't hear you come in. I wonder if she thinks it's suspicious I didn't say anything to her before. It's likely. If I were to tell too big a lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here, just asleep until now. Oh, have you seen Hanako today, by any chance? No, she seems to come in only just before the bell rings, or after that. Do you want me to tell her something for you? No, it's fine. It's strange, but I think we're the only two people in the school right now. I don't hear anyone else on my way here. I shouldn't have gone up so early today, I guess. You're chastising yourself for doing something that other people should. Punctuality is a good thing. I think so, anyway. It's a very busy morning today. The festival is coming up soon, and today is the deadline for event registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. It could be that everyone is trying to complete the necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that's why it's so quiet today. Oh god. Misha. Not in the morning, please. Hi, hi! Oh no. Misha pops into the room with Shizune as if on cue, shouting with a loudness that makes Lily visibly flinch. Hi, Hee-chan. Hi. Look. Oh. Look, it's the class representative. Hello. Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha's or Shizune's use of the word look. Good morning. Oh man, Lily's voice is just way more easier to voice, dude. Of course, you're not the representative this, of this class, right? Right? I'm not. Lily seems a little more guarded in her answers to Shizune than she was with me the other day. I guess they really don't get along at all. Then I realized that Lily might actually not know Shizune, not know Shizune is present, and she's trying to detect whether or not she is, to know who she is talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha, but knowing that she and Shizune are practically inseparable, she might expect Shizune being the one that actually talks. Damn, how complicated. I decide to help Lily out, for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, Shizune. You were here even earlier than us. Misha puffs out her cheeks angrily. Why is she getting angry? Does she feel emotions on Shizune's behalf too? It's not that weird though, that Shizune didn't like my little comment. It's true, I was here earlier than them, so me saying something like that could definitely be misinterpreted as anything. Especially to Shizune, who doesn't have the benefit of hearing tone to gauge intent. Before I can start weighing whether or not I should apologize, Shizune has already moved on. Class rep! <clears throat> Class rep, it's a good thing you're here. We have to talk. The festival is coming up in three days, right? Every other class has already handed in their projected budget reports for their events. Even the first years, except for you. Wahahaha. There's little time to hand it in, isn't there? Today! The deadline is today! You're certainly taking your time, aren't you? If I had it my way, I'd have- I've had- 
I'd have had all of the necessary paperwork days ago, but someone had to say the deadline, please extend it. Yes, that was me. Planning something on the scale is not a small task, and a week is too small a time frame to expect a whole class to work out such a complex issue completely. Do you want to know what's harder than distributing the funds for one class event? Handling the same matter for every class in the school and then some. The one who does that is me. Misha puts her hands on her hips and stands up straight. Wow, she is really getting into the role. Lily doesn't look like she's very amused though. Hey, Shizune, aren't you being a little too hard on her? There's still a whole day left. Please, Sisao, it's alright. Lily seems happy I'm taking her side, but a bit conflicted that I might not think she can take care of herself. If this is about the budget, then I'm disappointed you think I've forgotten about it. I understand how important it is. Then, can I have it, please? Shizune, she might not ha have it on her at this exact second. It's not here right now. I asked two students to take care of it for me. Students from my class. She emphasizes the last sentence much to my surprise. She knows about Shizune and Misha's effort to rope me into the student council. I guess word must have gotten around, so now she's using me as ammo against Shizune. This just gets better and better. It was your responsibility. A budget report isn't something you should be delegating away. As class rep, it's your job to be on top of things. This kind of disregard for proper procedure is really just terrible. They completed it, being capable of doing so. But the students have been sick recently, so they could not come to school and give it back to me. If you want, I will apologize on their behalf for getting sick. Okay. <laughs> Although Misha misses Lily's little jab entirely, Shizune doesn't, and she seems torn between being offended by Lily's daring and jumping for joy at the prospect of a challenge. Lily, don't they live here at the school? That's like a five minute walk, you know? What could they possibly have that prevents them from taking five minutes out of their busy lives to drop off something that will affect the enjoyment of their entire class? Lily opens her mouth to say something, but Shizune closes the gap between them and starts signing furiously, waving her hands around like an orchestra conductor. Misha tries her best to convey the same passion, but can't seem to lose her normal cheerful tone. The result is interesting and somewhat surreal. And what's with that attitude? I said that it's not something you should be delegating away. Are you the class representative or aren't you? Tell me the names of those two students. They should have your job if you can't even handle something this simple yourself. One form isn't the full extent of what I'm supposed to take care of. Lee's tone is growing slightly impatient, but she's doing a good job of not letting Shizune see how unsettled she is becoming. She's playing her cards close to her chest. Shizune, on the other hand, wraps her fingers cheerfully along the edge of her glasses, knowing Lily can neither hear nor see how excited she is. Of course you do so much, class rep. It must be difficult being you. Lily tightens her lips at Misha's words, clearly understanding the intent behind them, even though Misha delivers them without even a hint of the sarcasm which they were meant to have. Shizune and Lily don't like each other, that much is clear, but this seems a little much. It seems like Lily has had enough and is ready to push back. Oh man. Top 10 anime battles and wow. Okay. I was actually just discussing the budget report before you came by. You must be very talented to have finished all your student council duties so quickly that you can track me down to make sure I don't forget my own. Are you accusing me of snacking off? It seems like you're confusing me with yourself. I don't think so. That would be a very difficult thing for me to do, comparing myself to you. You're right. The difference between us is like heaven and hell. And it's not hot. And it's not hard to guess which one you might represent. Oh wow. Top ten anime battles. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's ignore that. Although I did point it out, <laughs> but whatever. The air between them ripples with the heat of their enmity. Enmity. Well, not really. They can't disguise it anymore, though. Even Misha looks like she's beginning to understand the real nature of this conversation. Wow. Hey, Chan, don't you slack off either. 
What are you talking about? Aren't you aren't you taking part in the festival, He Chan? You are, aren't you? Then I hope you're going to do a lot more to make sure you go smoothly than this person. I don't understand why Shizune is suddenly getting mad at me. Honestly, I'm on Lily's side here. For a bunch of reasons, but mostly because I feel like it's kind of unfair. Hey, I'm the new guy, remember? It's not like I could have done much, even if I wanted. That's right. You shouldn't expect a transfer student to jump right into the into it on his own on his first week. Lily taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decide to back her up too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable unreasonable with us both. Uh oh. Excuses, excuses. Miss Class Rep has had plenty of time to deal with the report. And we repeatedly offered you a position to help in the student council work, but you refused to commit yourself to making the festival a success. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if... I don't have time for, for this right now. No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn into a confrontation with Shizune, and this is what she wants. Whatever, forget it. I turn my back at them. Lily, class is going to be starting soon, so we can talk more later. I'll tell Hanako you were looking for her. I can feel Shizune freezing. Maybe this is the first time she has ever been ignored in such a blunt matter. Thank you, Hisao. I'll leave now, then. She gives me the sweetest smile and I, I've seen all week, and turns on her heels to make her exit. As soon as Lily walks out the door, I suddenly start feeling reluctant, reluctant about turning to face Shizune. I can feel her eyes burning into my back. I can't bring myself to look at her. She must be furious. I keep expecting Misha to say something to alleviate the tension, but it really is wanting too much. In the end, I go back to my seat and listen to the sound of Shizune's footsteps as she marches out of the room. She doesn't return until a few minutes before class. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in, in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up with my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably, unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over 7 minutes, instead opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equations just to pass, ta pass the time even though they are right there in the textbook. And I sped up my, my reading. <laughs> when the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do, so I stay for a while, reviewing what we covered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have time to deal with crowding in the hallways. I, don't no I notice Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizune is signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there is pent up anger in there. Misha is trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business. Shizune signs to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit out spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips her trips over herself like she's deal dealing with tongue twisters, and then on top of that. She has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished and the girls sit down on their seats again. Ooh, ah, I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to re reconcile with Shizune a bit, without getting roped into the student council thing again, though I suspect that door is now closed for me. Festival, prepar festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in the school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. 
Shizune scoffs at me at first, as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Either. Misha pricks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well that it's almost like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. I can just think of Misha being Shizune stand from like a jo from Jojo. <sighs> she must have practiced it vigorously. One of my favorite words right here. Such a great descriptive word. Well, of course, we're in the student council. You know, so we're pretty busy. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with all our strength. We, w we would shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festival were to fail. That's why there must be no flaws. No, er, I think that was encumbrances. No, nothing that might make the festival short of perfect. Shizune's passionate speech and Misha's enacting are really oddly fitting of them. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, Hanako. I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Shizune stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she's showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanako? Has Lily been here? Sorry, haven't seen Sato. She uh, came by in the morning though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usually setting gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little uncomfortable, watching Hanako's reactions to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom, working on their festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? You need to find her? She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you have missed each other. She waits a little be without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's proper to answer such a question. Yeah, yeah. I can come with you, if it's okay. Hanako nods fractionally, still on guard, her shoulders stiff like wood. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression she seems to wear almost constantly, one that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. <clears throat> I kind of understand why she always seems to be so wary, or maybe like why there could be a person like her. <clears throat> But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon. Were you planning to eat with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad though. Uh, it's not as bad because dinner's dinner time is longer than lunch hour. But I can understand why Hanako could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag as we take our leave. Hanako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take long for us to be walking at a comfortable pace down the hallway. It's almost It almost feels like we're going for a stroll together, something that I can't say I've really done before with a girl. Hanako doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing though. Even though we are, work, we are walking at the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's still a little uncomfortable around me, given how shy she is. There doesn't seem to be much helping it, at least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there is not much of a crowd there, but Lily is nowhere to be seen. 
Hanako's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked elsewhere, else, uh, somewhere else already? I don't know why my OBS froze there. That's strange. Just at the library, I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Ah, so not exactly a thorough search then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class like Shizune said, right? R right. With the slightest, slightest of nods, Hanako agrees with my reasoning. God, she's being so awkward. Hey, what's the problem with that though? She has her reasons. I, I guess. I, I bet. It's like I need a double layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small talk might help her become a bit more used to me. It isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both our minds. So you and Lily usually hang out together after class, right? I yes. I'm not quite sure what I expected from her answer, nor why I even asked a question. That much was rather obvious, after all. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle, either, so I suspect that Lily may well be her only friend. Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflexive nod. Compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech, Hanako hastens to make her answers as prompt and short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, though. Even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, evidently appreciating the fact that Lily goes out of her way to help her. It's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say more. Both of us content that the discussions reach an end. As we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading downstairs like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hanako has moved around behind me. Hey, are you alright? Just keep going. The students pass us without as much as a second glance, and Hanako takes up my takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. Her momentary reprieve from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, or even shy girls, but Hanako seems to be pretty far beyond what I call normal in her fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily acting as a mediator, I doubt Hanako would have been able to walk beside me like this. She seems to be complete she seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of the walk up to Lily's classroom continues in strained silence, while I rue her inability to socialize at all. After we make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting such a din at all. Well, I guess we found her. This wasn't hard. Did Hanako come here first and come to me for backup? I wonder. Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. Then that can only be a good thing. Eventually, the two of us reach the floor to class 3-2, which Hanako less than subtly positioning herself behind me. I open the door. Ooh. It's a completely different... It's like... Uh, a very... Completely looking... Uh, I can't speak. A completely different looking uh, classroom than ours. Inside is a hive of activity. Seemingly very stu every student in the class talking at once as they work hurriedly on their separate tasks. Going by the paint cans, decorations, and banners being made, it must be for the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. There. Finding her among the din is surprisingly easy, not the least because of her looks. With a couple of students gathered around her as she stands in front of the class, she seems to be in charge of the preparations, or at least busy organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over the floor for a lack of desk space, I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Hi, Lily. She perks her head up as she breaks off talking to a noticeably smaller girl who must be her classmate, trying to listen as best as she can. Sorry, who? Ah, sorry, Hisao. I have Hanako too. Uh, hi. She's pretty skittish. Considering the number of people around, it isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to assess the situation before turning to the other student once again. For the moment, just ask Maria for his advice. Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. 
A quick nod and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall's face for her orientation. Wait, Kenji? That Kenji? I quickly turn about, leaning to the side to see past Hanako. Sure enough, in a corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. His eyes remain only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he had to be to make out my face when I met him. Sorry about that. Our class doesn't have many students with even partial eyesight, so they're in high demand. That's right, class 3 2 was specifically for students with poor vision. Preparing for the festival must be pretty arduous for them. Need a hand? I could give you help if you need some. Maybe Hanako could too. A chance to set her mind on something would do her good, but I doubt she has the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods in affirmation afterwards, so I'm confident I made the right move. Lily gives a notable, noticeable sigh of relief. Ah, that's good. This might actually get finished before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would you be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a big task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Can she? Sure. She seems surprised that I know him. I can't really blame her. I take it you've met? Our rooms in the dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's a good thing. It's a good... <sighs> well, it's good to see her getting friends so fast. Friend? I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Hanako's silence during the proceedings reminds me of the reason I put her, I put her up to helping in the first place. We'll go help him then. He knows what he's he knows what needs doing, right? That's right. Just ask him if you have any problems. Chorusing Chorusing? Cor cor Chorusing in an ascent, Hanako and I begin another trek across the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white calico in front of him. Hey Kenji. No answer. He continues dragging his paint soaked brush along the large half painted kanji that stretch on the sheet and pencil. Kenji? <clears throat> huh? <laughs> huh? What? Who is it? It's just my <laughs> freaking Minecraft uh, villager and noise I just made there. Bro. Would, would be like him though, I, I bet. If, if this is the way he treats class members, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. It's me, his uh... Right, right, I know that man. What are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to really get focused on his work, hating to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Hanako's footsteps as she walks out from behind me reminds me that she's here. I was just gonna help with the banner, Hanako and I, that is. Hello. Oh. Oh. Uh, hey, I guess that's okay. As soon as Hanako enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about face. His sudden faux hospitality is slightly unsettled. Oh, right. Women. On second thoughts, this may not have been a great idea after all. Hanako and I grudgingly set ourselves down on the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji, noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it. Last 3-2. Noodle stall? You guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some stalls outside. Or something. Or something. His non-committal nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. So how do you want to split this? We do borders while you do the text? Or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine. You do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over to grab a brush, I notice Hanako's already debating between colors to use. By the time I put, I've put brush to cloth, she's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off everyone around her worked. With a dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's working to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially, though. Okay, man. Why are you here? Hanako just wanted to help wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. I get it. It looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep undercover. I should have guessed. Letting the truth live by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him, in any case. 
Is that why you're here? Obviously. It sucks, but there's no better way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school. A harsh world. Yes, very harsh. He misses my true meaning as if he as he leans back. Satisfied I'm sympathetic to his cause. I'd better get down to work. F finished Looks like I am too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of her patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage of hers. With a grunt, I lever myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign as well as Lily and a couple of students talking among themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Need a hand? Uh... I offer a hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burned? I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a, mom a moment before noticing that I mean the banner. It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With the floor significantly significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and shelves, it's much easier to get to Lily as we cross the room. We finish the banner. I guess that's all he, he, that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Hisao. Hanako, if there's any way I can thank you. It's fine. Beat sitting in my room studying, at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods, before suddenly remembering one last person. Uh, oh, is Kenji still here? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, yeah, just finished. He carefully slides his sign into an empty section of the shelf to dry, before quickly walking past us and out the door. See ya, man. Bye. The remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope- uh, Oh my god, I almost gave her the Kenji voice, oh no. I feel so bad. No one should be given the Kenji voice. I hope we- I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed, the class's plans this year were ambitious, maybe too ambitious. The stalls look nice though. She's right, it shows that a lot of, lot of work's gone into them. My, my, I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now there's not much work to do into this festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late, should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hisao? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. Oh, it is really late. Well, the nighttime li lighting really makes the gardens look quite different. Compared to the usual look of lush greenery, things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms, trying to eke the most out of their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Lily's cane regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah, still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing with Shizune took me kind of off guard, though. I grit my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Ah, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. Shizune and I, Shizune and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers as she remembers Shizune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance to Hanako for her view on this, but her expression is unsurprisingly evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it, some, for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. 
I'll be glad once the festival's over, in any case. The change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine, my old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of a school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals on such special occasions. <clears throat> and yet the students are the ones who do the work? What an unfair world. Hanako and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear a grumbling. I, I suppose coming from, an, from a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That go away towards explaining her well-bred speech and behavior, in any case. As we come out to the dormitories, it eventually comes time to leave for our respective rooms. See you, Lily. Hanako. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's to the women's dorms just next to the guys. As it is as is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Hmm, nighttime shenanigans, huh? Walking past him, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long before w walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. Ah. <sighs> Anyways, guys, I think that will be it for me today. Uh this video, well, this video will be split into two parts. Uh I don't know how I'll split it up, but the first part will be out on Monday. I'm recording this on Sunday, so yeah. And then the latter uh, will be on Tuesday. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video. Peace.